Hello everyone, this is the pre-market report video for today, 25th July 2024 for the near shock market in terms of Nifty and Bank Nifty. Just for info, tomorrow 26th July, I won't be able to make a pre-market video due to an emergency. So after today's video, I will see you back on Monday. Thank you for understanding. Now, without delay, let's get started. Yesterday for the second consecutive day, FII were significant net sellers. The net sold shares worth 5,130 crore rupees. On the other hand, DI were net buyers, net bought shares worth 3,140 crore rupees. So approximately, the net institutional fund outflow was around 2,000 crore rupees. In line with that, for the second day in a row, Nifty had a volatile session with a negative bias and closed negative of around 0.3%. Here, Nifty was mainly dragged down by big banks. I mean, if you see the top 5 negative contributors, 4 of them were banks. And this was evident in the Bank Nifty Index as well, which dropped near 1% compared to Nifty's 0.3% decline, which means clearly Bank Nifty underperformed. And this could be due to either Bank Nifty's expiry or the banking stock futures expiry day, or perhaps the market was nervous about Axis Bank and Federal Bank's quarterly results, which were not announced during the trading hours, but were released afterwards, which we'll discuss those in a moment. So far, if you see all those, it might seem like yesterday's market was terrible, but in reality, it was not. It was just that some selected large cap stocks didn't perform well, which in turn made the Nifty and Bank Nifty look very bad. Overall, if you take the total number of listed stocks, yesterday 70% of them increased compared to Tuesday, only 30% of the stocks decreased. In fact, considering all cash and derivative markets, FIA increased their long short ratio from 1.5 to 1.36. Sector wise, 7 out of 13 major sectors increased significantly while 6 closed negative but the magnitude of the declines was less compared to the positive stocks. So according to me, yesterday was a perfect day to check anyone's investment portfolio performance. A good balanced portfolio should have increased by at least 1% and a very good portfolio should have increased above 2%. If anyone's investment portfolio gave a negative return yesterday, it likely means the portfolio was concentrated on a few large caps. I mean, there is nothing wrong with having a concentrated portfolio, but it's worth checking. Anyway, that's just my view. So the takeaway is, yesterday the market was good, but the negativity in large cap stocks made it look like a bad market day. Moving on, let's discuss the US market. In the last pre-market video, we mentioned that both Tesla and Google released their quarterly results on Tuesday night, which the market didn't like. Hence, in the post-market trading, Tesla shares dropped around 7%, and Google's Alphabet shares dropped around 3%. That sell-off accelerated when the US market opened last night. Tesla shares dropped 12% in one day and Google fell over 5% which created a sell-off in the entire US market. Dow Jones was down by 1.25%, S&P funded decreased by 2.31% and Nasdaq crashed 3.62%. Just for info, 3.62% drop in Nifty is roughly equal to 900 points drop in one day meaning that much magnitude of the crash was in Nasdaq last night. In line with that, earlier this morning, Gift Nifty dropped to 24,251. Since today is expiry day, there will be no premium applicable. So for now, it indicates a gap down opening of 180 points. Please note, this is just the status which at the time I'm making the video. So based on today's performance in the Asian market, the momentum can improve or deteriorate further. Then regarding Indian ADR, all four major stocks dropped above 1%. In comparison in the Indian market, yesterday only HDFC Bank was down around 0.5%, whereas the other three, ICC Bank, Infosys and Wipro closed flat. But in US, as I said, it was nearly a crash, more negative, which also emphasizes the 180 points gap down opening. So these are the things that happened in the yesterday's market. Let's move to new India specific info. Yesterday, after the Indian market closed, LNT, Axis Bank and Federal Bank released their quarterly results. Let's discuss those in detail. First, LNT, if required, please pause and have a look. Almost all the top lines, revenue, EBITDA and net profit all increased and beats the analyst estimates. Additionally, as of the last quarter, LNT has an impressive order book worth 9 lakh crore rupees. 
So, is it all positive in LNT results? It looks like it, but their CFO gave a little warning about a significant labor shortage. I don't know the magnitude of this shortage or how the market will react to it. Anyway, at least the top line financials were good. However, Axis Bank missed its analyst profit estimation because they allocated 97% higher provisions compared to a year ago. So, from the top line, Axis Bank results not good, but we know the reason why it's not good. But the question is the gross NPA was deteriorated very marginal only by 0.02%. For that, why Axis Bank has to increase their provision? It means, do they expecting the future NPA increase? Only time will tell. Second, Nestle India and Dr. Eddy's lab announced they have formed a joint venture company in March 2024 to manufacture health supplements like minerals and vitamins. Personally, I consider this as positive, so both companies will be on focus today. Third, Rogers released an article that the US government gave approval for Reliance Industries to import oil from Venezuela. Both the US government and Reliance Industries haven't commented on Rogers' query yet. So, possibly this rumor might save Reliance today. Let's see. As a summary, US market either trend reversed or started consolidating. Our market so far this month managed to hold the 24,000 mark. Today is the final expiry day for the month. Will it hold? Then regarding the things to look out, Nestle India, Tech Mahindra, Canara Bank, Ashok Leyland, AU Small France Bank, Adani Energy, Adani Green, DLF and Mahanagar Gas are some companies whose earnings results are scheduled to release today. In terms of macro data, during market hours from 11.30 am to 2.30 pm, various German business climate and conference data are scheduled to release. Finally, in the aftermarket hours, very important US related data such as GDP growth data, goods order data for June and the usual weekly jobless claims data are some of the items we need to keep an eye out today. Coming to technical, Nifty opened 30 points gap down and with volatility closed around 24,410 with above average volume. Thus, on the daily chart, Nifty formed a bearish candlestick pattern with long lower shadow and minor upper shadow. First, on the positive side, Nifty defended the 24,300 and 24,400 levels on a closing basis for the second day in a row. However, RSA and MACD momentum indicators are still maintaining a negative bias and for the second day in a row, it failed to sustain above the 24,500 mark, indicating selling pressure at higher levels. Considering all this, the immediate support for Nifty is at 21-day exponential moving average, 24,250. If it fails to hold, that will accelerate the selling pressure to 24,100. On the higher side, 24,600 is the key resistance for continuing its upward journey. In case of Bank Nifty, it opened 90 points gap down and extended its downtrend throughout the session, finally closing near 51,320. Thus, on the daily chart, Bank Nifty formed a bearish candlestick pattern with upper and lower shadow and a lower high lower low formation, all indicating the continuation of a negative bias. However, there is a silver lining. Bank Nifty dropped below the lower end of the Bollinger Band, which now indicating an oversold position and raising the possibility of a rebound. So, the 50-day exponential moving average at 50,900 is the support. On the other hand, resistance is at 51,550 and 52,000. Regarding the monthly options data, the maximum call option open test was at 25,000 strike, followed by 24,800, 24,500 and 24,600, with maximum new call option rating at 25,000 strike, followed by 24,400 and 24,800. On the put side, the maximum open test was at 24,000 strike followed by 23,500 and 23,800 with maximum new put option writing at 24,000 strike followed by 24,100 and 23,500. Thus, from options data, Nifty is expected to face a hurdle at 24,500 to 24,800 zone on the higher side before making a strong move towards the much awaited 25,000. Meanwhile, 24,100 and 24,000 are the crucial support levels. So, that's all in this video. Hope you all got some useful information. Please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video so it will help me beat the YouTube algorithm and also motivate me to do more. Please don't make any investment decision based on this as I'm not a CB Rational Advisor. I'm doing this for me and viewers' educational purpose only. Thanks for watching.